the war in Afghanistan took about 30 days more or less to win. Since then it's been an occupation. And you cannot win an occupation. At most you can suppress and under duress most people will finally rebel. So seven years after being on the back burner it now becomes Obama's hell. Most people here do not remember or even ever knew the military was ready to invade in August 2001. It's true. There was a dispute over who would lay a pipeline through the Afghani lands. And what can I say, Unical, the U.S. base corporation, had lost. So our army was set to invade and reset the contracts, no matter the cost. Then out of the blue, 9-11, a gift from heaven putting the crosshairs directly on Al-Qaeda, a CIA, duh, created patsy, aided and abetted by the Pakistani ISI and financed by why the good old American taxpayer. So even if the fairy tale conspiracy the gov and media spun our way is based on a smidgen of fact, the 9-11 tragedy was paid for by our treasury as all involved were on the payroll of the CIA if you trace the money track. On the domestic front, the bailouts reaching double-digit trillions for the banksters and about 14 bucks a week for the 95 percent who actually work. The fancy finance boys get theirs without a string attached, while those who manufacture are treated more like dirt. Health care to be reformed in the most expensive way by demanding we all pay to be insured. One third the cost of which is overhead and profits for the paper pushing vultures who by financing our Congress know their voices will be heard. We can fill the streets and bang our drums in discontent and yet be ignored until elections roll around. Publicly, they'll take our side until elected. And then you'll hear a sucking sound as once again the Congress sheep and corporate creeps collude behind closed doors to drain the money up into the coffers of the few, knowing next election you will limit who you choose to one of two. And still no prosecutions, no real investigations, into crimes committed here or overseas. The sanguine few who set the stage to torture in our name, the CEOs and CFOs who gamed away the mortgages and deeds. The ultimate of war crimes, which the unprovoked upon invasion of a nation really is, will remain around our necks as long as we are in Iraq. Even if you think your ignorance is bliss. And pork barrel projects? I'll name just two. The F-35 and the F-22. Overrated, overpriced, overvalued. Flying death traps meant to fight a war that never was or ever will be. 100,000 jobs to build 100 F-22s? The Pentagon can no longer account for nearly a third of their money. The Agriculture Department is subsidizing the four largest agriculture corporations in the world along with millionaire part-time farmers and the chemical giants. The dwindling middle class is 
beginning to pull its head out. It's finally started to wake up and soon it might even become defiant. Our last best hope is a television placated over indulgent sedentary public misinformed from preschool through college. Still, you got to play the cards you get. Try to do it with a little style. Now, into the circle five.